Uh, thank you so, so much for your hard work, guys, Excl exclamation point. Why do you think that Bethesda Softworks still hasn't switched to using id tech across all of its various internal studios, like EA with Frostbite, Ubisoft, Anvil, Slowdrop did years ago? Hearing that id tech veterans Machine Games assisted Bethesda Game Studio with Starfield's motion blur mm. implementation suggests that there's already internal collaboration. So why not insist on using a robust game engine that Bethesda owns, John? Pretty simple oh boy. one. Take it away. Yeah, so there's so much more to these things than just the rendering engine or anything like that. The The most important aspect in developing these games are the tools back end used to create all the content, build everything around the game. And frankly, it, what id tech does, while extremely fast, they built their custom tech specifically to make those types of games right now, right? The tools necessary to create a game like Bethesda has done here with Starfield that's not part of that pipeline and really wouldn't make sense in this. I mean, conceivably, yes, they could contract out id, I or, you know, basically work with id to develop <laughs> new technology that's perhaps more robust in certain areas, but we're talking just an unbelievable amount of work, rewriting all the tools, everything that they've become familiar with over the years just for that. And the, the work that it has done and the choices they make in their technology, uh, it's, it's all about speed within these first-person games, really. And the needs for a and Bethesda-style RPG, it's likely not factored into any of those performance budgets. And, you know, yeah. I mean, something like Unreal is designed to be like an engine that can handle so many different types of scenarios. It's an everyman engine, whereas something like id Tech is a lot more streamlined and designed for those types of games. And it just probably wouldn't be worth expanding it out. I think it's also very, very funny that he's using EA and Frostbite as an example. Yeah. Because Frostbite uh, in its implementation in various titles has been a bit problematic, including uh, especially notably in Mass Effect Andromeda, which had all these huge issues, and in Dragon Age Inquisition, which had some issues before it. But it had so many problems that uh, EA, I think, moved away from their policy of trying to get their studios to all adopt the Frostbite engine. And now I think they're using a, a, a more varied mix of game engines. So in that case, you look at a, an engine that works great for Battlefield, but actually doesn't meet the content creation demands of a big RPG, right? And I think you, you'd see exactly the same situation uh, here. Yeah, the, the engineering time to, to get these engines up to what they need it to be. Like, even with, like, Ubisoft, he mentions Anvil and Snowdrop. Like, Mario and Rabbids uses Snowdrop, right? But there mm -hmm. was there were key features that they needed to make their game that didn't exist in that engine when they got it. So they had to spend a lot of engineering resources implementing this stuff just to do basic things, right? Uh, mm -hmm. And I think that's exactly what Bethesda would run into with um, id Tech. And honestly, it took them a long time to make Starfield as is, and that's with a team that's built up around the tools that they use to make that game. And it still took them that long. Like, re-architecting all the tech underlying technology in that way, it would just, I, I can't imagine how much more time and money and staff that would require and what the results would be. Like, it's just, this is, this is how they work right now. And yeah, I, I don't think it's viable. Yeah, I'm just sort of picturing a scenario here where, uh, you know, the id tech uh, engine team, who are some of the best in the business, right, they're, they're busy working away on the engine that would become, you know, Doom 2016. And then Todd Howard walks in and says, <laughs> right, uh, yeah, I'd like your engine to be able to support the physics for 200,000 potatoes. So when I open an <laughs> airlock door, you get like proper, proper physics for those 200,000 potatoes. It's just not, it's just not why id tech was developed. It's just not the direction it was developed in. It's not made for those types of games. You know, it, it's a completely different discipline. It's not really a, a good idea. <laughs> Let's put it that way. But of course, um, you, you can still leverage their their knowledge and talents to improve absolutely. what they sure. are using. And I think they have done that with certain things on Starfield. You'll see in the credits that id Software themselves, several people uh, that worked on that have worked on Starfield, they're in there as well, right? Yeah. Like mm -hmm. providing assistance in those areas uh, is important. And honestly, one of the big things I've seen from just reading around the community is that the creation engine, for all its faults, it, the mod tools, the creation tools they unleash on the community is well regarded and beloved. And it's such a key part of these games, like modding 
And I feel yeah. like that's something else that would have been potentially threatened or reduced in, in capabilities had they switched completely. Right. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. yeah, like I, 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 you know, all this engine conversation, it is interesting to see it all, but yeah, <laughs> I see why they stuck with, with what they know.